Hi friends, so this week we are starting our printmaking unit. Printmaking is super fun and there are a lot of different forms of printmaking, but this week we're going to be focusing on monotype printing. And hopefully by now you learned that monotype printing is basically the process of drawing or painting on a surface and then transferring that drawing or painting to a piece of paper. And we call it monoprinting because we're lifting something off of a smooth surface onto our paper to pull that print off, and therefore we can't pull that same print over and over. It only makes one. So for this week, we're going to be making mono prints out of our pet portraits. And if you don't have a pet at home, you can always go online, ask an adult to use a safe search engine and print out a picture of someone else's animal or an animal that you enjoy. If you do not have access to a printer at home, I did a little example here of how I can draw on a piece of paper. I can look at a drawing video online of how to draw a dog. I actually drew this based on a photo that I took of my own dog. And then I kind of simplified some of his lines because my dog is covered in fur. So I obviously didn't wanna draw all of those tiny little fur marks. I just wanted to get kind of the general shape and lines of him. So what I did once I have either my printed photo or my photo that I've drawn that then I wanna make duplicates of through this printmaking process. The next thing that I will need is something smooth and shiny to put on top of it. So a couple of different things will work for this. You can use some plastic wrap that you might have in your kitchen like I did here. And I just taped it over the surface of my paper so that everything was flat and smooth. I was sure that this wasn't going to move around while I was working. You can also use a really large plastic bag. You could also use a, um, like a sheet protector that you would put in a binder because that's kind of a smooth plasticky surface. So you want whatever you're taping over your photograph to be clear and see-through so you can see the photo underneath it. And you also want it to be a slick smooth surface so that your ink will transfer off of it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a washable marker and it is very important that it is washable. If you try to do this with a permanent marker like a Sharpie, that isn't going to come off of your smooth surface onto your piece of paper later. So we wanna be sure that we're using washable markers. And I have black here, you don't have to use black, but we're gonna go back to our print once it's dry and add some color later. So I just went with black for now. And you're going to go into your photograph and trace over all the lines that you've made that you want to copy onto your print. So I made like those lines, these, and I'm just going to trace over all of the original lines that I made until I have an outline of my pet. I forgot to say this at the start and I made a mistake with it as well. I would recommend starting in the center of your drawing and drawing outwards because this is going to stay wet on this slick surface. So if I'm trying to go in and draw my details in here, I wanna be careful that I don't smudge these lines that I've already done with my hand. So it's always better to start in the middle and work your way to the outside so you're not dragging your hand back through marks that you've already made. But I forgot about that. So oops, Mrs. Turner, we're gonna have to make do. All right, so now that I have everything that I want transferred onto my print drawn in washable marker, my next step is going to be to wet the piece of paper that I have that I want to transfer the print onto. So I've just got a sheet of plain white paper here and we don't need our paper to be soaking wet. In fact, you don't want it to be soaking wet. If your paper is too wet, it's going to rip when you lay it down on your print. So we want it just kind of barely damp. So the way that I do that is I have just a little bucket of water here and a sponge. You could also use something like a paper towel, like a damp paper towel. And I'm just going to wet my sponge and then I'm just wiping it gently over the surface of my paper just once. I'm not going over and over the same area until it's soaking wet. I'm just kind of wiping my paper down with a light, light layer of water just so it's a little bit damp. And that's going to help our paper pick up the marker from our print better. So once your paper is a little bit damp, 
you're going to lay it damp side down on top of your print, being sure that you're lining up your image so that it's centered on your paper. We're going to press it down once. I'm going to lay my hands in the middle. I'm going to smooth over the surface of the back side of my paper, being sure that I'm not moving my paper as I'm doing this. If you move your paper, it will smear. I'm pressing down really firmly, trying to pick up as much of that marker as I can. And then I'm lifting it from one edge only all the way up. And now I'm left with a print of my dog. And it, the nature of printmaking is that it's never going to be perfect. So you can see here, like some of my areas are a little bit lighter than others. And I would like those to be darker if I had the choice. So if it doesn't turn out how you want it the first time, that's okay because our surface is reusable. So if I want to pull a second print, I can't use this first one because I've already lifted a layer of ink off of it. So it's going to be even lighter the second time that I pull that print. So instead, I'm just going to take my sponge and I'm going to wipe the surface of my plastic clean so that I can go back and pull another print. So you can pull as many of these mono prints as you want. You will just have to wipe down your surface in between printing and then trace back over it with that marker again to get a fresh layer of ink. Now, once your print is pulled and you're really happy with it, you could either go back in and kind of darken up some of these lines with a marker if you wanted to, but I think that that kind of takes away from the print, the printed look of it. And I like this kind of texture that it gives me when I'm printmaking. So I personally would not trace back over it. I would just leave it how it was or pull a second print if I wanted it a little bit different than my first one. Then you're going to go into all of these areas and you're gonna start adding color. And you can do that with any material that you want. Um, you could use marker, crayon, colored pencil, even paint to fill in these areas. But don't forget that we want to make our print nice and big so that it fills the paper that we're printing it on. And we want to make sure that we're taking care of this background area in some way that we're not just leaving it white and blank and boring. Okay, last thing, I went in and I added some color to my print. I pulled another one and it turned out a lot darker, you can see. So I'm much happier with this one than I was with my first one which turned out a little too light in some spots so that really goes to show you if you're not happy with your first one try again you might be happier with your second I went in and I added some color with markers you can again use any sort of materials that you want with that but one thing that I wanted to remind you about is that my original picture that I had taped down which I've removed now or I would show you my dog was facing this way right and so when I pulled the print, I obviously flipped my paper upside down and printed it like this. And then when you lift it off, the dog is facing this way. So keep in mind anything that you print. So if you're trying to print words, if you're trying to print an animal and that animal is facing a certain direction, keep in mind that it's going to be flip-flopped, like complete opposite when you pull your print. Um, that's something to think about before you decide what to draw or what photograph to use. So we can't wait to see how you guys turn your pets or animals into mono prints and how you decide to decorate those this week. We hope you guys have a lot of fun printmaking at home and we can't wait to see what you do. Bye.